Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Amira Hall. I'm a spirit medium and today I have my channeled message for you from my Arcturian guides for the month of February. You know, when I was tuning in to them and asking them what they would like me to communicate to you, they kept talking about perspectives and perceptions and shifting perspectives. And I know that this seems to be a recurring theme for probably the last three or four months. And if you re-listen to some of the messages in November and December, they will be valuable for you right now. Um, they're, they're just telling me that there's a shift in this. And so I was trying to understand more specifically how this applies to us in the 3D world. It's all good to say shifting perspectives and maybe you'd like to leave your comments below on what you're noticing different. So what they showed me is how a few months ago I took off wearing my sunglasses. I used to wear them every single day living here in San Diego, California. You know, I would wear them all the time for the bright days, all the days, even cloudy days. But I stopped wearing them and it didn't even dawn on me like why did I all of a sudden stop wearing my sunglasses? I love those sunglasses. So what Spirit explained to me was even the glasses, the best glasses, I have a good pair of Ray-Bans and they have a sharp glass, but the filter on the glasses, it, it changes colors. It also changes the sharpness of how you see. It can also change the depth of your perception. So Spirit was explaining to me that they were guiding me to see things brighter perhaps seeing through things in a different way, perhaps seeing things lighter and more crisp. So I, kept, I sat with that for a little bit, trying to decipher more specifically how, how this was being applied. And they were explaining to me that this depth of perception, this new awareness of our reality and what that is, well, all of this is shifting. So for instance, our perspectives, maybe how we view oh, a, a topic, let's say immigration, or how we view marriage, or how we view our religion, perhaps how we view ourself, perhaps how we view even the notion of having and receiving support. So I sat with that a little bit more and asked them to explain what that meant. And they were saying that what we think we see we aren't and some of what we do see isn't so then again i asked for more explanation they explained to me that for instance a lot of grief and fear is being triggered not only with the coronavirus that seems to be a, a spreading pandemic possible pandemic then there's the you know celebrity uh death of kobe bryant um, and a lot of other celebrities and, and loved ones are leaving us very quickly and suddenly and shockingly so I asked Spirit, you know, what is that collectively and what does that mean for us? And, and, they, and they explained to us that what's happening is your awareness of your reality of being alive. What does that mean? Does that mean you're truly awake? Does that mean you're fulfilling your purpose? Does that mean you're living your best life every single day? Does that mean the way you see somebody that might have slighted you or hurt your feelings is, is, is a reality? It's your reality, yes, and your feelings you're entitled to. But is, is it changing or can you change it or can you allow it to shift is what they're saying. You know, our beliefs are not real. Yes, they're real to us, but the shifting beliefs of what is solid perhaps, or what is you thought would be forever, like you think you're gonna live forever. Well, we do, even when we leave our body. And I can attest to that in speaking to many loved ones that have departed. You know, many of us are being faced with loved ones that have sudden illnesses, and we know their departure is probably more inevitable than we see our own. And this is all triggering our sense of mortality. Who are we? What are we here for? What's this all about? And perhaps we got it all wrong. Perhaps how you've been perceiving your role and your existence and where you're going on this in this life, perhaps that's been two-dimensional. Perhaps it's been completely selfish. Perhaps you can't even acknowledge how much you mean to others and what you really mean by being here. I know there's a lot of people that are really stuck in depression right now. 
and are frustrated because things aren't going the way they expected it. So these shifts in perspectives of what you expected of yourself, that's being changed, that's being altered in, in radical ways. There's a sense of awakening overload. I mean, that you're awakening to the sense like you're exhausted. And it's not just this year, it's been a buildup. You're exhausted of the pretense, perhaps you're exhausted from not being real to yourself or getting the things that you really want or hold dear in your heart. And so all of these things are being reevaluated. Many of us are clearing clutter. I spent a couple hours just emptying out 30,000 emails in my inboxes. They were just all spammers and stuff like that. There's some subs subscriptions that I subscribe to. And so all of that frees up energy of where I had energy invested that was holding it back from me being able to create. So the whole notion of the quantum energy tools and the, and the teachings that I teach is that if your energy, you need to reclaim your energy back from all the busyness that you're doing, all the errands you're running, all the people you talk to and the work you've done and on and on. Okay. When we reclaim all of who we are, we can take off those sunglasses and see things in a whole new perspective. I had a scare the other day. You know, I communicate with, with loved ones on the other side and spirit guides all the time and the angels. So I was taking my artwork into my very first exhibition on Saturday at the Off Track Gallery. So if you're in the San Diego area, I'd love to see you. So in doing that, there's a little bit of a process to check in. And I threw my paintings, two paintings in the trunk before I left early, ran some errands, and it was a hot day. Guess what? I was all happy pulling them out of the trunk, except they were stuck together, Mwah! kissing each other. They were stuck together. And I was just horrified. I just wanted to die. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe I could be so stupid. And so I went in there, I went through the, all the checkpoints of checking in your art. And I explained to each of the ladies, I hate to be a drama queen, but here we are. And I misjudged the temperatures today and leaving my paintings in the car, blah, blah, blah. I said, you know what, I'd like about an hour if I could go across the way and just chill out for a bit and have the paintings in a cooler environment that perhaps they'll just contract. That was the picture I got in my mind. So I went across the way and they agreed to it. And I went across the way and I thought, oh my God, I, what am I going to do? I'm exploding roses. It's one of my tools. And I was grounding myself, calling in my angels, help me, help me, God, help me. <laughs> I'm sure you've done that a few times over the last few weeks. And so when, when I did that, um, all of a sudden there was all these wine glasses in this bistro and, and bottles of wine. I said, do you guys have Prosecco, which is my favorite go-to? And, um, she goes, yeah, we do. And I said, great, I need to chill out. And so do my paintings. Do you have a walk-in freezer? And she goes, no, we don't. But we have a walk-in cooler. I said, that'll work. I said, so I'll have a glass of Prosecco. And if you could chill out my paintings, and then I can check and see if this will resolve the problem. So sat there for 45 minutes. And guess what? They came apart with joy. And there was no damage to the paintings. And so they're up on display. So I'm very, very excited. I'm extremely grateful to my angels and, and the tools because the ladies con commented on how incredibly calm I was and how assured I was. And I made the comment something like, well, when these paintings sell, and they noticed that too. And so when we're grounded, when we're present, and when the energy can flow through us, we can unstick the stickiest paintings or the, 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 the most challenging it's issues or situations that we are be, being presented with. So I am here to say things are getting more challenging. Things are a little more rocky. In fact, this last week, I found myself standing straight and I felt like the earth was tilted and I literally lost my balance. Like somebody pushed me over. It was pretty interesting. So have you noticed anything like that? Go ahead and leave a comment below if you're noticing your balance being challenged or you're just thinking so different or you decided to do something different. Oh, and by the way, the ladies commented too. I'm impressed. I'm so surprised that you thought of putting the paintings in the freezer or the chiller. And I went, well, that's because I'm listening, right? That's because I'm listening to my intuition and I'm tuned in. So whether you're in a grocery store or in the, in the you know, the art gallery, 
by, by tuning in and being in your flow, you can receive the messages from spirit. And speaking of that, I was shuffling the cards earlier, and this is the card that they gave us for this message. And lo and behold, look at that. The first thing that pops up there is that yellow sign. What? Reverse direction. Make a U-turn. Simplify. Go back to where you came. Keep things simple. You know, I love the dolphin there. He's talking about, well, they've always got a smile on their face, right? Being amused with the foibles. I'm amused with my incident at the art gallery and how, you know, the lessons that I learned, but also how I was perceived by others with this massive meltdown <laughs> tragedy. Um, the dolphins teach us how to be in the flow, how to keep it simple, right? They just glide through things. Um, and everything is streamlined with the way they function. They're incredibly smart, right? And there's not anybody I know that doesn't love dolphins. In fact, they're even being, some people feel like they are ETs and they've kept, stayed here on the planet to help us ascend and raise our vibration. And look at that old wheel there. You know, we got to keep the wheels greased. We got to keep them turning. We got to keep moving the energy. That really is strong here. I see these two monks here. So going within, keep being quiet, being still, you know, going back to some old principles that work, you know, clear your energy, clear your energy, clear your energy, spirit saying, you know, get your the quantum energy tools and practice those. And if you're not, I feel sorry for you because honestly, whatever we use, we cannot get that energy stuck. And that's where we're going to have problems. So I see there's a treasure chest at the top of the, up the top of this back wall here. And so as our energy rises, we will be able to step into those treasures and be able to attract and have the things we want. But this very old monument that looks like a temple or a monastery or some um, sacred place that's been carved in rock, some of these old foundations and principles uh, we're stepping away from, we're turning away from perhaps to create some new patterns, some new perspectives, perhaps taking a new perspective in an old way or in an old process or path or, or choice. And then I asked Spirit to please show me one of my paintings. I've been painting feverishly like a mad, mad artist. And here's the painting that they showed me for this month. And the painting of this, the title of this painting, it's called The Illusion of Reality. And I'm just tickled because look at this bubble here, the, you know, the tree upside down. So in terms of our perception, is it upside down or, or right side up? And in a bubble, are you stuck in a bubble? Is your little world kind of narrow in terms of what you should be looking at or perceiving or uh, receiving? You know, the world is abundant. The universe is abundant. Look at the gold that surrounds us here in this bubble or this swirl of energy. I just feel like, in a sense, it's allowing us to step through um, a perception, perhaps a limitation, perhaps a block, and how we've perceived ourselves or the world around us, or even having what we want. Have we been putting those limits on ourselves? Have we been screwing ourselves basically you know and i found myself really you know looking at this how simple it is and how uncomplicated it is and yet how vast and rich the depth of this painting seems to have and and i feel like that's the nature of our spirit that's calling to us and wanting to show us the direction the new path the opening the shift of perspective the shift in perspective and perhaps introspection. So there's so much depth here for us to unravel or for us to allow to appear, to present itself, to show us and guide us what's the next step. And this is all the process of this great awakening that's occurring, this great shift in perspective and perception. When you're on a road and you're looking in perspective, you look into the horizon, the road gets narrower and narrower and narrower. But in truth, it's the same space, but based on the distance, it looks smaller. So that's what's happening to our vision, our sense of ourself, our sense of the world. 
So in looking deeper at this meaning of what spirit is, I'm asking spirit, you know, what what more do they have to share about this change of perspective or perception? And they're explaining that, you know, what we what seems far away might not be what may be perceiving as too difficult or too far away or too inaccessible is right there. It's only a matter of your perception. And so when we allow ourselves to reach into that portal of the painting and grab or reach for what it is that we want or need, if you need support, you know, you need a shift, you need a new view of yourself, a new um, way of expressing yourself, or maybe something to refuel you, re rejuvenate your spirit. If that's you and you need an energy clearing, there's a link below in the description and also a link for my art where you can find out more information and the events. And for anybody that's listening in this lo in my local area, I will be doing a um, an evening of messages from the other side, spirit medium messages that will be in person. So you're welcome to join me there. The details are on my events link and on my website. With all of that, Spirit is just delighted that you're awake to what's shifting and changing in your world and that you're open and receptive to new perspectives and new ways of expressing yourself and new ways of receiving. Many blessings to you. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. And YouTube's made a lot of changes, so don't forget to resubscribe. And, and please give the video a thumbs up if it resonates with you. I'd love to hear what's going on for you and your world. So until my next video, many blessings. Uh, just realized that actually one of the most interesting shifts for me has been that I, after years of doing meditation, I finally, finally am at a point with actually cleaning up the, the, the head. I have finally a tool to um, make my mind quiet it's been as quiet as never before and i'm really really thankful for that for that because i've been suffering so much from my mind like it's been giving me a very 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 serious time and uh i would have never thought it's so easy to actually uh, yeah make it that uh, get it that quiet and every time i realize okay my it's coming up again i just go in there clean it up and it's gone again and i'm like totally zen and i'm super super thankful for that that was wow it feels so uh, great and free and yeah yeah and meanwhile many other things also change like my trust level is much bigger i also now i listen uh, i hear my inner voice much much clearer and yeah and i also manifested uh, one of my dream gigs uh, that I always wanted to have at a certain congress and festival. Uh, so I just had it yesterday. And uh, yeah, like miracles happened yeah, there, definitely.